The modding scene for Warhammer 2 is no less than exceptional. You can find just about everything to change the game to the way you like it. Everything from unit balancing, complete game overhaul such as SFO, or cosmetic ones such as removing the jawbone from Aranis Assault Spite, if, if you really want to see her pretty face on full display. In this video, I will be sharing some of the mods that I use for 99% of my campaigns. The reason I say 99% is that sometimes I'll add a mod for playing a specific faction or race that I won't be using for any others. This video will also serve as a thing I can point to in my guide videos if anyone wonders if I am using mods and what mods I use. I don't know why I have to say this, but someone is probably gonna argue with me over it, so let me just point out that these are the mods that I like personally. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with using other mods or a different version of these mods, but these are the ones I like and that's why I use them. Anyways, let's just kick things off and go take a look at some of the visual mods that I use. Now, these are mods that only affect the visuals of the game and do not affect the game play in any sort of manner. First off, we have the Brighter Borders mod by Decomposed. This one is very simple, but it helps you differentiate what part of the map is controlled by which faction. Before I got this mod, I often wasted campaign movement going back and forth over the border because I thought I was inside my own territory, only to find out I wasn't when I tried to recruit. Perhaps I'm just dumb, but especially in Lustria, where everything is just another shade of green, it can be very hard to differentiate whether you're in your own territory or in enemy territory. This mod helps that by changing the colors of the borders to something more bright and more different to, as I said, differentiate between the different factions and their controlled territory. The second mod in our visual section is Building Progression Icons 2 by Spartan 6. Have you ever noticed that the icons of each building stays the same no matter what tier it is? No more, I say. With this mod, you'll see that the icon adds more details and extra stuff to the building as it goes to higher tiers. This can also be nice if you have multiple of the same buildings in your province to just easily differentiate which one is a higher or lower tier than others. The camera is probably the most used tool in gaming, whether you're playing an FPS game or a strategy game such as Warhammer, but it's also one of the least appreciated. The Better Camera mod by Cam2150 was the first mod I ever installed. It's one of those mods you can't really appreciate until you've been playing with it for a while. Simply put, it makes things more smooth, adding better camera, turning, zoom, and so on. If you've been playing without this mod until now, or just for a while, go ahead and try to use it. I am almost certain you'll be able to feel a difference. At the same time, if you've been using this mod for a long time, try and turn it off and just play a battle. It might not seem like a big deal, but I think you can definitely feel a difference. Speaking of battle, Warhammer 2 has a lot of really great and beautiful battle maps. However, no matter how many there may be, they can become a bit repetitive by the time you play your 10th campaign. The Ultimate Lighting and Random Weather by Masiski, I'm very sorry if I pronounced that wrong, helps break the repetitiveness by adding different weather and time of day variations to the battle maps. These are randomized, but will appear less frequent than the usual battle maps. So most of the time, it'll be the battle maps that you know by heart, but every once in a while, you'll have some changes, such as fog or rain or even snow. Sometimes it'll be daytime, sometimes it'll be nighttime, sometimes it'll be the middle of the day. It really adds to the experience. Once again, like the better camera mod, you don't quite realize you have this mod on unless you've been playing without it for a while. At the same time, you'll probably miss it really quickly if you start playing without it. That covers the visual mods that I personally use. Now let's move on to some campaign and lords and heroes mods. First up is Generals and Heroes Maximum Level 60 by Satov. As the name of the mod suggests, your lords and heroes can now go to level 60 rather than level 40. The experience needed for the level 1 to 40 is the same as vanilla, but past level 40, the experience needed will start scaling upwards, requiring more and more for each level. If you're planning to go for a long campaign victory, or just really like to level up your lords, this mod helps them make them even more powerful. You might think this breaks the game since you get another 20 skill points to spend, but it will take a while to get those extra points as the experience needed scales as mentioned before. The mod also includes a skill dump in the skill tree, so if you max out the skills of a character before hitting level 60 and have leftover points, you can just dump them into the skill dump and it'll take care of that. Speaking of leveling lords and heroes, isn't it super annoying when you confederate a faction and all their lords and heroes are just horribly skilled? Like, you confederate Gorok and all his points are spent on making Skinks stronger rather than buffing the Saurus he is supposed to use? 
or Morathi having no spells because the AI puts all the points into the yellow skill line? Worry not. One button respec by smoking have you covered. This simply adds a button on the bottom left at the skill tree. Clicking this button gives you the option to respec any lord or hero, but only once. I mostly use this, as mentioned before, when I confederate another faction to fix the mistakes the AI tends to make. You can of course also use it if you have spent skill points on a character and want to change it up or just don't like the way it turned out. Just remember, it can only be done once. I find this mod to be very useful in combination with the previous mod that allows you your lords and heroes to go to level 60. This way you can have powerful late game lords and fix the mistakes the AI tends to make when leveling. Once again, you can only use it once per hero or lord, so choose wisely and don't go ahead and just think you can spec one way and then redo it all the time. The save camera settings also by smoking does not need a lot of explanation. Rather than having to choose the speed every single time you start a new campaign, it will automatically load whatever the settings you have saved for your camera settings on the campaign map. So next time you boot up a campaign, put the camera settings to whatever you want, then save, and boom, you're set for any future campaigns. And those are actually the mods I use most of the time. There's not a lot of them, but I think it really helps improve the game in a way I like it. However, there are a few more mods that I tend to use every once in a while or later on in the campaign, and we'll quickly mention those as well as what they do. First up is the No Climate Penalties by Psycho. It's a mod I want to use if I go for a world domination campaign or if I'm playing a faction that has multiple bad climates near them. This is one of those features in Warhammer 2 that I understand the point of, making it harder to hold territory that isn't meant for your faction, but sometimes it's just more annoying than it is challenging. For example, just off the top of my head, I remember that Malekith's starting province has one, uh, one city that is uninhabitable. So by having this mod on, it becomes habitable. And it's just, you know, nice. It's a little bit annoying that three of the four cities in his starting province is just fine and everything's good, but one of them is, is not, even though it's right next to all the other cities. No Extra Upkeep by Unnamed Shadow is actually a mod I use very often, but only when I get towards the very end of my campaigns. I usually play on the very hard campaign difficulty, and while the challenge early on is nice, it just becomes a drag later in the game when you defeat three enemy armies in a turn, only for the AI to send another four the next turn as if they didn't have to spend any money. And if you didn't know, the AI doesn't pay the same upkeep or recruitment cost for their units as the player. So while you're getting a higher upkeep every time you recruit a new army, the AI is just fine. So when you get to the late game and the AI can just send Doomstag after Doomstag or army after army, I think it's fair I don't pay extra upkeep for additional armies since the AI will almost always have more armies than me anyway. Recruit Defeated Legendary Lords is a mod I use when I am playing a faction that can confederate, such as the Tomb Kings. When a faction of your race is destroyed, you get the options of killing them off permanently, sending them to another faction of your race, delaying your decision, or adding them to your own faction. I use it in a way where I only take them into my own faction if I have defeated them or if they were my allies and they got destroyed. Of course, you can just absorb them into your own faction without these self-implemented rules. It's just how I use it. Alternatively, you could also just keep delaying your decision until you control the area in which the faction was originally located and then absorb them into your own faction. There's a ton of ways to use this mod, do as you please, is just think it's really nice that you can get the legendary lords after you conquer them, so to speak, if you're playing a faction that can't confederate. And that covers my personal list of mods. I might add or remove some in the future, but for now, these are the ones I use. Tell me about your favorite mod in the comments below, as well as if you're going to be using any of the mods I mentioned in this video. My name has been Reynolds, I hope you enjoyed this short video, and until I see you again, I hope you have a wonderful time.